This is from Steve in Pursuit. He says, I must confess to all my future employers and readers, my college education was a joke. My degree means a little more than I am patient enough to find a way to live through four years of educational farce. That was so <laughs> relatable. Oh, my <laughs> stars. Yeah, but tell that to the surgeon who's operating on your grandmother, though. It's okay, but <laughs> I'm a believer that college is a scam because you have some people that do need the credentials, like doctors, yeah, people that work right. in medicine, sciences, etc. I did not need a degree for theater. Yeah, like, no, me that's, either. That's the butt of every joke as a theater and then an, an English degree, but it really does make you feel kind of like a joke. You rack up all of this debt, you graduate with honors, you've got all the credentials and stuff and nobody hires you. But you know what's interesting though, even with a, even with a theater thing, I think, like I have thought about taking theater classes just mm -hmm. because, you know, I've got, I'm in LA and like, I'd love to do some comedy stuff. Uh, I, I've been in a couple plays. I've had people tell me, they're like, dude, you have really good stage presence, but like you need to take a couple theater classes. Yeah. So I, I have like totally have thought about that before. But if I ever took a theater class, I would go into the the thought, and maybe it's hard to tell an 18-year-old this, but I would go into the thought of like, this is a risk. Like if I go to this theater class, it's such a small percentage of people who graduate with this mm -hmm. that actually do something with it. Two quick things. One thing that happens a lot in, in discussions on like college schooling and education is we take principles that only apply to a minority and then we um, transfer it over to things that apply to a majority. So for instance, everyone is sold on the doctrine of you need a degree to be a player in the world. Yes. And then we, you know, when someone critiques that or questions that, we point out the lawyer, the accountant, the surgeon, and so on, but it's the overwhelming majority of people who go to college, it's not even close. 100%. They're not going to school for law. No. They're not going to school to be a doctor. And so even if we just sat that on the shelf, let's focus on all the people that are going into debt to get degrees in anthropology, to get degrees in theater. Nothing wrong with that su with those subjects, but there's something wrong with the hope that they are being sold. The second thing I would say, you know, like if you wanted to go into theater and you wanted to go into acting, here's why it's so important to make that distinction between education and schooling. Think about all of the real actors, and I define real actor as people who actually have a resume where they're experienced in theater, people who get paid to do acting, people that are like the people that actors want to be like, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Like I, I define a real actor as when I go to someone who wants to take an acting class and I say, who do you want to be like? And, and they're not going to tell me their college professor. They're going to tell me somebody that's on Broadway, somebody that's on TV. Those types of people, people that have been in commercials, they're teaching acting classes out there. Yeah. Yes. You don't get a degree in return for those acting classes, but you get to learn something from people that are getting paid to do the thing that you want to get paid to do. Where the three of us agree is that we want to help people avoid debt as much as possible. And we want to help people avoid mistakes. And that's what this whole podcast is about. It's about talking about all our crappy mistakes. And yeah, yeah. my BS degree was just that. It was a BS degree. And you got I a was, bachelor's in science? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I did not know that. Yeah, it was, I thought you were making a joke. No, it really is. A, <laughs> I mean, he was making a joke. I mean, but yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, but no, really. Yeah, but like it was. Can I explain the joke to you real please. quick now? Please. <laughs> So, but, but here, but here's the thing, like, let me tell you what I got out of, out of that degree though. I am the only, I am the only member of my family on both sides to, to have a four year degree. So my, I might have like an aunt or something. Um, but I'll tell you, like when I graduated, my mom came, my brothers came, my sister came and, um, they were like, I've never seen them so proud of me. And it wasn't that I was like, oh, wow, they're so proud of me. But I saw them. I saw their wheel. Like, wow, if Ryan can, cause I graduated at like 31 and I saw them looking at like, oh, wow, if Ryan can make this change at 30. So that's what I took away from it. Now, for all intents and purposes, for all intents and purposes, mm. I always get that one wrong. Um, uh, uh, it was a waste of money. Absolute waste of money. But I, there is still something I could still take from it. But yeah, I think we're all three of us agree. It's like, hey, if, before you go into debt, before you, you know, dedicate four, six, eight years of your life to a degree, like make sure you're doing it very, very intentionally. Don't do it thinking that, oh, if I just make it through it, then I'm going to get out of college and I'm going to, I'm going to make a million dollars a year. Like that's yeah. not how it works. It, maybe yeah. in the eighties and early nineties, like that's, you know, you were kind of opening some more doors. Um, but it's, it, it just doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. Hey, hey Josh, I promise I'm going to be fast with this. <laughs> and I'm also going to breathe and calm down because I get so worked up. Oh, me I know. Too. <laughs> so I'm going to calm down. I, I got to breathe. Okay. <laughs> One important thing to think about with the risk, and I used this early when we had our first conversation on school, I believe, is risk is not just defined by the possibility that something may not work, but it's also determined by the costs that you invest in something. 
So one way you can reduce risk is by lowering the cost of the investment. Mm. We don't tend to get stressed out about buying toasters, Mm -hmm. right? Because we know that the replacement cost is easy. We know that if we buy a toaster that we don't like, we're not going to be homeless as a result of that purchasing decision. One of the reasons why I encourage education alternatives is because it's not just about helping people stay out of debt, but it's also about helping people think about the process of becoming better human beings in ways that reduce costs and reduce the anxiety of making the wrong decision. Mm. When you're dedicating four years of your life and six figures of debt to a decision, you better be right. You better know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You better love it. You better hope that you don't change your mind because that's a high cost. On the other hand, when you say, I'm just going to dedicate six to 12 months of my life to getting a job and getting experience and trying something new, even if at the end of that period you don't like that, you didn't dedicate five years to find that out. You still have money. You still didn't accumulate any debt. You have professional work experience. You have a network. And then you can go do something else. And college isn't even off the table as an option if you feel like you need to do that. And that's the part of the discussion I think needs to be involved. It's not just about staying out of debt. It's also about opening yourself up to possibilities that don't have the same risk of costing you your life. Yeah. Let's talk about what's obscene here. It's obscene to give an 18-year-old five or six Mm. figures worth of debt that they will now be trapped for the rest of their lives to encourage them to do it, to tell them their life is going to be better when you have so many examples of people who went a different route because we're conflating school, schooling with education. I teach a writing class. I don't have a degree of any sort. And yet far more people, literally thousands of people have found immense value in the writing class, even though I don't have a piece of paper that says, I should be able to teach you writing. No, because they found value in the words that I write. They see that it's there on the page. That's right. And what degree I have or don't have is irrelevant. In fact, I've had high school students take the class. I've had medical doctors take the class. And everyone in between, people as uh, as English as a second language, people who have you know, growing up in America and they write relatively well, but they want to write that first book. The rising tide lifts all boats here. And what I realize is I have a recipe. And if I break that recipe down, I can help people understand how to write better. That's why the course is called How to Write Better, because it's not about here's your piece of paper. Now you're a better writer. Mm. No, I'm not worried about you being a writer. I'm worried about the writing. Ooh, it's much on. more mm. about the verb than it is about the noun. I don't care that you're a writer, but if you're sitting down and writing every day, then you are. Hey, there, there's a tweet. Uh, we I, I need somebody to pull up the Twitter account of Mitchell Earl because I hope this tweet is pinned. But the last time I looked at his account, the tweet was pinned. And it's it's a statement that goes along so well with uh, with Josh's opening here. But, um, you know, one, one thing I'll say while, while podcast, uh, Professor Sean looks that up is whenever this topic comes up, man, there are always people who, corner me to have to admit that there's someone out there for whom college works. Yeah, but of you course. Know, don't, don't pick on the poor little kids who go to college. Like, like, don't you agree that college works for someone? And, you know, not only do I agree that college works for someone, but there's no epidemic of people being bullied and harassed for going to college. It is the status quo. It is the more socially acceptable option. And yes, it's okay to go to college, but we don't have to take discussions about the viability of alternatives and make it something that we have to apologize to the status quo before we have. But here's the Mitchell Earl tweet that I love. Uh, It's a dialogue between entrepreneur, bank, student, and a bank. Hmm. Entrepreneur, Hmm. he goes to the bank. Hello, I would like to have a $50,000 loan, please. Bank, you've got to be kidding me. Your credit score is shit. Who told you this was a good idea? Student, but it's for college. Bank, reach us for rubber stamp. Say no more. Mm. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist's private podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.